Hi you guys, welcome back to another episode of From the Heart. I'm your host, Chloe Turcha, and this is a podcast where we talk all things fitness, wellness, lifestyle, nutrition, mindset. Um, it's essentially me just pouring out my heart week to week um, and walking you guys through the lessons, the struggles, the highs, the lows of my week and teaching you guys what I learned because I feel like it will be easier to learn through me than actually experiencing it. I try to you know, utilize my struggles for the good. So um, it's it's not all bad. It's not all bad, but I'm so happy you're here. Thank you guys so much for listening. Um, If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. Um, This is actually like the second or third time I have had to record this intro because, well, if you saw the title of this episode, I'm in the luteal phase. And I swear, I swear I have the worst brain fog when I'm in the luteal phase, like the second half, like five to seven days before I start my cycle. I like... I, every time I film an episode, you guys have been podcasting for like over a year, almost, is it almost two years? It might almost be two years, which is actually insane. Um, but I always notice when I record on these weeks, I feel like my thoughts are just jumbled in my head. I feel like when I speak, I'm like, did that even make sense? I don't even know what I was saying. I hope that resonated. I hope I don't sound just, I don't even know, scatterbrained. Um, but it's a struggle. It's a real thing. Um, and I think it's the only time I really, really notice the effects of brain fog, if that's what I would call it. Maybe I just have like really bad like attention span, but I think it is brain fog. Cause I feel like my thoughts are just foggy. That, that is what it feels like. So, um, anyway, I'm going to be sharing with you guys one, if you're kind of new to what the luteal phase is and hormone health, I'm going to break down some basics on that just so we can kind of refresh the memory if you are kind of familiar or introduce it to you so this makes more sense or it'll just be a little review if you know what I'm talking about. Um, So we'll go through that and then I'll kind of share some of the symptoms that I feel um, because I then created a list of things that I do to help myself feel my best during my luteal phase because like I said I'm in it right now and today I was walking around I'm like what am I going to podcast about today like what's in my heart and then I was like dang like I was just having a rough morning I really was and I wasn't really in the mood to podcast and I was like you know what we're going to turn this into good and we're going to make an episode <laughs> about the struggles of it and it kind of forced me to reflect and be like, okay, Chloe, we're going to take action because we're not going to feel like this for the next week. We're not. We're going to implement things to make myself feel better and to enjoy my days more because they're a little less enjoyable in the video phase, if I'm being honest. But we can control a lot, and so I like to control what I can control. Um, and so, yeah, so essentially what the video phase is, is it's like this the week or two before you start your period. So it's like the very end and I'm going to get a little sciencey because I actually got really into hormone health kind of, uh, when was it? So almost two years ago, back in March of 23, I got really into hormone health and I was researching it a lot and I have a lot of notes in my phone. Um, so the four different phases is your follicular phase. This is phase one. It lasts from like seven to 10 days. And this is, this starts the day after you stop bleeding from your period. And then you go into your ovulatory phase, and this is like a three to four day phase, it's kind of short, and then you start the first half of your luteal phase, and then you work your way into your second half of your luteal phase, and then you go into your menstrual phase, which is like your period when you actually begin to bleed, Um, and that can last three to seven days, and it's actually very fascinating to me because um, I was on hormonal birth control, the IUD, I had Kylina for three or four years, like quite a while. And one regret that I do have, I talk about this a lot on my YouTube channel. I opened up once I got it removed. I'm um, not opened up, but like just shared more about it because it was very like prevalent in my life at that time. But I, uh, I don't know why I got on it. I really don't. I was dating a guy at the time. I wasn't abstinent then either. So I guess it was a bit of a preventative thing for me at the time. Um, and I never really had a super bad period before. Like I really regret doing that. If I, I, I don't like to say I regret anything, but I really wish I wouldn't have done that. I've um, gotten on birth control because now I'm abstinent. I'm waiting till marriage. I am so happy about that. I feel like too, over the course of those few years I was on it, so much was coming up in just education and the media and just so much more talked about amongst my friends um, about hormone health and the importance of it and the effects of it. And hearing all this stuff, it like, kind of frightened me being like, wow, I'm on hormonal birth control. And, um, so there was a few reasons I got off it. One, like I said, I wasn't having sex anymore. So there was, I didn't have to be preventative in that aspect. But then there was also the reason of there's so many side effects to having it. And it really terrifies me because I'm coming up into like, I'm 23 right now. I had to think about that. I'm 23, but like by the end of my twenties, probably within the next like 
I don't know, four, five years, I'll be trying for kids. Um, and I don't want to cause any issues myself, like self-inflicted things due to like a hormone of birth control, because there are many side effects. And one of the things that actually happened in my life that was really scary. And I think this was like the ultimate thing that pushed me over the edge of being like, get off birth control. Because the reason I did not if I'm being honest, and I kept putting it off is because I was scared to get the IUD out because everyone talks about how painful it is to get in. And I'll be honest, when I got it inserted, it, it wasn't painful, but I was like, maybe I'm just lucky, but I'm like, dang, I'm scared. I don't think I'm gonna get lucky twice. I don't want to get it out. And I went and got it removed. You guys, it literally was the quickest. It took, I think 15 seconds. If that, like, it was the fastest thing. I think a pap smear is worse. The, a pap smear is worse than getting my IUD removed, if I'm being honest. Um, so I had that in the back of my mind. It kept kind of prolonging me off getting off of it. But anyway, um, over like last August, so right when I moved to Arizona, right when I moved out of Iowa, away from home, thousands of miles from my family, um, my mom got diagnosed with breast cancer and it was really, okay, I'm not going to get emotional, but I'm, I'm on my video face, man, so I'm getting emotional, my eyes are watering, um, but it was really scary because that was like the first time in my life that like my mom, like someone who I like shared DNA with, a lot of our things, a lot of stuff like that can be genetic, um, and it just opened my eyes to being like, Chloe, you need to take your health so serious because um, her breast cancer was linked to a hormonal reason. Um, and they can't pinpoint the exact like, oh, this is exactly what caused your hormonal like issues. But she was on a hormonal IUD for many, many years before she was pregnant, after kids. Like she had it much longer, but they were, the doctors were telling her that that could have been a very high possibility of what caused her breast cancer. And I was like, ugh. That's terrifying, and I share the same blood as my mother, clearly. And so I'm like, okay, we're getting it out, we're getting it out. Um, but anyway, long story short, too, with my mom, she's so strong and she fought it, and she went through radiation and had surgery to remove like the cancer cells in her body, like around, and then I think it was in a lymph node. Um, but she got it removed, and she's been cancer free since December. So such a blessing. We got to go actually last. Christmas like when we went home for Christmas we gotta go and see oh my god I'm gonna cry I'm literally gonna cry um but we gotta see her at her lap oh my gosh why am I crying so much I did not expect to get emotional talking about this I wasn't even planning on talking about this actually this is just like a I don't know my heart and mind just went here but we gotta see her at her last like radiation appointment is really sweet but oh my gosh I'm getting so choked up but it just really like struck a chord with me and it really scared me um and so it it really inspired me to like take my hormone health serious so that leads me to where I'm talking now oh my gosh I need to have a second <laughs> to myself I feel like you can start bawling anyway the luteal phase that's where we're at now that's present time um but the luteal phase sucks if we're being honest you know we're being honest um it's not fun and a lot of the symptoms that I experience in the luteal phase are uh, they're so frustrating sometimes. Um, one, I'm very sensitive and emotional. Like, I feel like <laughs> since being saved um, and growing in my faith, um, I think the Lord has softened my heart a lot for sure. And I've talked about that in other episodes and that doesn't have to do with hormones, but I just think he's like softened my heart and changed my perspective on a lot. So I am more emotional. Um, but I like used to never cry, used to never get emotional, but like, Oh man, now during the luteal phase, like anything can make me cry. That's like a, talking about my mom's fight with cancer is like a very normal thing to be emotional about, but um, I'll be like watching a TikTok. I'll be, yesterday I was in the Trader Joe's parking lot, y'all, and I saw this, oh, the sweetest old couple and they were walking to Trader Joe's at night and he was holding her hand and like guiding her back and like holding her hand from the exit of Trader Joe's all the way to the car door, went to her side, opened the door like a gentleman, helped her, like assisted her into the car, was carrying the groceries simultaneously, and then got in the car and like drove. And I was like, true love exists, true love exists. But I was like getting emotional in the car, just watching it because it was so sweet. And I'm like, oh, wow, like, wow, that is so sweet. Um, but little things like that will literally make me cry or a TikTok or whatever. I was watching Dancing with the Stars and I started getting emotional, <laughs> like just silly things. But, um, that's a big, a big symptom, if I want to call it a symptom of mine during my luteal phases. I'm very sensitive. Um, but to also, I'm very, like, my mood can fluctuate a lot. Like, I guess I'm just very moody. Um, and I can get really low patience. Um, I can react. And that is one thing where I go back and forth because I'll talk to my boyfriend. And one of my tips is actually to let the people in your, like, 
close circle, the people you see on a like day to day basis, talk to on a day to day basis, let them know maybe that you're in your Lydia phase because I think it's good to like have that understanding and maybe they can give you a little compassion. Um, but one thing my boyfriend and I go back and forth on is I'll explain to him, like, dude, I'm in my Lydia phase, like, just give me some like give me some grace. Like I'm hyper emotional. Um, I can be very moody. I can be a little irrational if I'm being honest. Like a lot of the times I'm like, I know I shouldn't be acting like this. I know I shouldn't be reacting like this, but like I am like, I'm irritated. And so I have to like have a second conversation in my own head and be like, Chloe, calm down. Like this isn't actually you, this is your hormones. And then it kind of helps. Um, but sometimes it, it doesn't help, but I'm just in a mood, but, um, that's a big symptom of mine. But actually the first one that I typically notice, well, I would say I get a little more sensitive from like the beginning of my luteal phase, but then I feel like the real symptoms for me begin like in the second half of your luteal phase. So like the last like five to seven days. So like a week out from when I start my cycle, um, I wake up and I, this is like clockwork, you guys, I wake up and I'm so inflamed and I feel so puffy and I feel so hot. Like my body temperature is literally, I can tell it's increased and I have an aura ring. And the reason I have this aura ring is for this feature and pretty much this feature alone. Um, because I'll be honest, when I'm not in my video phase, this thing's dead half the time. I for, I just forget to charge it um, because you want to use it when you sleep. And I always think to charge things before bed. So I just forget during the day. Um, but I, when I wake up feeling like that, every single time I'll check my aura ring and my temperature is, is actually like high. And a lot of people use that to track their cycle, their temperature. The aura ring's amazing because it just does it on your finger. You don't have to like actually take your temperature, but you totally could. And it would give you the exact same results, you know? Um, but every, um, but one thing my boyfriend and I go back and forth on is I'll explain to him, like, dude, I'm in my luteal phase. Like, just give me some, like, give me some grace. Like I'm hyper emotional. Um, I can be very moody. I can be a little irrational if I'm being honest. Like a lot of the times I'm like, I know I shouldn't be acting like this. I know I shouldn't be reacting like this, but like I am like, I'm irritated. And so I have to like have a second conversation in my own head and be like, Chloe, calm down. Like this isn't actually you, this is your hormones. And then it kind of helps. Um, but sometimes it, it doesn't help, but I'm just in a mood. But, um, every time without fail, I'm like, yep, here she is. And that's how I know I'm like actually starting my video phase is when my temperature goes up. And then I'm like, all right, buckle up, Chloe. The next seven to 12 days are going to be brutal, but not really that brutal, but a little bit. Um, and I don't know One, I just like, like that feature because it, it's very like reassuring. Like, I'm like, okay, this is factual. The data tells me that like I'm in the luteal phase and then it makes everything make just a little bit more sense. Um, because another symptom that I, um, quickly notice as well, um, is my workouts are so much harder. I went on a five mile run the other day and I was texting my boyfriend three and a half miles in. I'm like, <gasps> like literally gasping for air. I'm like, why is this so hard? Like, I understand I'm not running the, like, as high mileage as I once was when I was training for my half marathon, but I'm still running consistently three times a week. Like I use the runner app. I'm increasing my speed. Like I should be getting faster and this should be getting a little easier for a five miler. I didn't go run a 10 mile run. Um, but then I was like, Oh, the next day I checked and I was indeed in my Luda phase. And I'm like, you know what? Probably started the day before. Um, and that's probably why the run kind of sucked, but I just noticed I'm like a much lower energy. I feel a little weaker when I'm lifting, I noticed like the biggest difference for sure during like cardio, like runs. Um, and the other one is just when I'm lifting, I feel like I'm pretty low motivation in the gym. Um, and I'm just kind of like more tired and it's just slower, a little bit slower. I feel like everything's a little bit slower. Um, and everything feels a little bit heavier, but I just continue on and I just give myself grace in the gym. I'm like, Chloe, you're not actually weaker. It's okay. You're not out of shape. You're just in your luteal phase. And it does help just like that knowledge and that, awareness of it does help me get through it. Um, and a few more, so I'm trying to think of the other symptoms that I noticed. The main ones are like, my body feels inflamed. I'm more sensitive and my workouts are harder. Um, I am much more hungry. I feel like my appetite definitely increases. Like I'm like ravenous throughout the day. I feel like it's a little less like steady. Um, I feel like I get random bursts of hunger. Oh, and the last one, duh, this is literally why I had to refilm this first intro of the podcast because I get so tired. I get so tired. And again, I mean, I'm in a yawn right now thinking about it. You guys, <sighs> excuse me. Um, if I yawn multiple times in this episode, I, I, I apologize. I had to restart this first clip because I yawned probably eight times and I was like, okay, I'm not editing all that out. I'm just going to redo the clip. Um, but I am very tired. I feel like I just don't really ever have that like spark of like bursts of energy. I'm just kind of like, 
flatline throughout the day, which is okay. Um, but it's hard because I go back and forth because they recommend having like a lower intake of caffeine when you're in your luteal phase, but that's probably my highest season week in the month of caffeine. Like I have two coffees a day during my luteal phase. Cause for some reason I think it's going to help. And it really doesn't like I poured, if you're watching, I made this iced coffee or it's a cold brew. So it's espresso blend cold brew. <laughs> It's really dang good. Um, but any other week um, of the month, I could have my morning latte. It's two shots of espresso, 120 milligrams of caffeine. Um, I can have that and be totally fine throughout the day. I have the most steady energy. And again, I attest a lot of that to one, cutting back on caffeine, cutting energy drinks out. I have those on like the very rare occasion. Because um, honestly, I was noticing that like when I would drink caffeine, midday I would crash like it, it would actually just make everything worse and I'd be more tired especially especially with other energy drinks and I was a huge y'all know if you're an OG y'all know I was hooked to energy drinks I had an Alonia or Celsius like every single day um so I've cut those pretty much out I just have them on like a very rare occasion um but yeah I can go all day on just a latte and totally feel fine other than my luteal phase, I'm like, oh gosh, like I need some pick me up. And yesterday, like I had one before I went to the gym at five, I drank the coffee at four, but it did help. Like I was like, brrr, like raring to go at the gym and it, it did help me. Um, and so today sitting down and talking, I'm like, I don't want to be like, okay guys, so I'm in the luteal phase, you know, like I wanted to be energetic and bring it to you and not be fun asleep and yawning through the whole episode. Every time I say yawn, I'm, I, I want to yawn. So I feel another one coming. So I'm sorry. But anyway, anyway, um, I don't want to just be sitting here complaining about all of my luteal phase symptoms because I know y'all are probably aware of most of those. Um, and I want to kind of go through the list of things that I have created to uh, help you guys that help myself through the luteal phase because I like to say we can control what we can control. And we can't control the fact that we're in the luteal phase, but we can do things to help, you know, lessen the symptoms, lessen the severity, um, or just like mentally help us get through it because it does take a toll on your mental, I feel like, because your mood just is kind of, and your energy is kind of, and then you kind of get in your head and it just, I don't know, maybe that's just me, but I feel like my worst thoughts and everything just happen during the video phase. Um, so I made a list of things. There's probably like 10, 12 things. Um, and this isn't in any particular order. This was just me going through my day and being like, okay, this is what I do to help this, this, and this. Um, so my first tip to help you get through your luteal phase is prioritizing your sleep. And this is mainly just because we feel more exhausted during the luteal phase. I'm so fatigued. I'm so tired. Like physically, I feel more tired, but also like, like, I mean, like in my body, but also too, like I feel exhausted when I, I just want to like roll over and go to sleep and take a nap. So if that does mean taking a nap during the day, I do allow myself to take those. I'm not a big napper, but during the luteal phase, I'm like, you know what? A little 15, 20 minute nap might do me some good. So I do utilize naps more if, if ever, but my main focus is really bedtime because I'm a morning person. I'm always going to be, I kind of roll out of bed, um, with the sun. I try to between like six and six 30 is my goal. Well, five 45 to like six 30 is my range right now. And the only way to make getting up in the morning easy is going to bed early. So I really have to kind of buckle down and be harder on myself during the luteal phase and just be like, Chloe, go to bed. Like you'll thank yourself tomorrow and you're not exhausted. Um, and so I try to get eight, eight to nine hours when I'm usually like a six to seven hour girl. Um, I, no, I, I feel like I average probably seven hours of sleep every night. Um, but I do try to get more during my luteal phase closer to like eight and nine. Um, and sometimes I do sleep in, like I give myself more grace in the morning. I still get up by like seven, seven thirty, but, um, when I feel like it, I'm like, okay, this is like the week that I'm like, you know, you can roll back over and go to bed. Um, but anyway, um, the next thing I really have begun to prioritize is, oh, my legs, you guys, I got to stop sitting crisscross when I record. I literally can't feel my foot. <laughs> anyway, um, I really begin to prioritize lower impact workouts because like I said, I feel like garbage when I'm training. My runs suck. So when I was training for my half marathon, I would actually structure my long run to sync up where I wouldn't run one during my luteal phase. Like that entire week, I did not schedule a long run. I would schedule like the day I started my cycle. Some people feel crappy on their first day. I feel like 
superwoman. I feel like, holy cow, the luteal phase is away. It's like washed off of me. I feel like I have all my strength and energy back. My workouts are amazing. I feel like I'm floating. Um, and so I pretty much just wait until I start my cycle. And once they start getting hard, I just kind of cut the long runs. Um, I'll still, I'll still do like shorter runs, especially if I am on a training plan that that's important to stay consistent. But when I'm not, I just give myself much more grace in that area. I walk so much already, but like walking is like my go-to. Like I'll give myself a day off in the middle of my luteal phase and not train, like not lift or run and I'll just walk. And I typically walk every morning. I walk like a f quite a few miles every day. Like I walk on my walking pad. Um, when I edit and work, I walk in the morning typically two to four miles. Sometimes I go on a night walk. It just depends, but I just try to keep moving because that's what keeps my energy up. Mooding is so good. Mooding. Moving is so good for my mood. It boosts my mood, my creativity, my thoughts are better. Um, so walking is therapeutic for me. So I really press into this during the luteal phase when I'm feeling blah. I'm like, we're going to go out and get some sunshine. We're going to go on a little walk. It could be for 10 minutes. It could be for an hour and 10 minutes. I don't know, um, depending on the day, but I walk as much as I can. And then I kind of just implement workouts where I feel fit. Um, another thing I just started doing was I took my first class on Monday. So like this is Thursday. I took this on Monday, solid core. So it's a reformer Pilates class. Humbled. You guys, I couldn't move my core. And today's the first day I've been like, fine. I was so insanely sore. I felt like I got beat up. Like I felt like I was bruised. I was so sore. And it was from my, it was my entire core. Nothing else was really that sore. I think cause I do train like my legs and my arms quite a bit, but my core, I don't train like that, man. That was intense. I loved it though. Um, I'm really contemplating getting a membership, but they're just really expensive. And I'm like, okay, do I want to commit to that? I don't know. Um, but that's a great option. Pilates, you could even do like Matt Pilates at home and follow a YouTube video. You don't have to go to a, a $35 class. Like you don't need to do that. Um, but there's so many great options. I've done them on YouTube as well, but just doing lower impact workouts like yoga, hot yoga, um, I really like Pilates. I I really like the performer Pilates. Um, but walking and Pilates during the week is so beneficial and I still do lift weights. I just give myself more grace when I do it. And I probably only do it like two times a week during the Lydia phase instead of three. Um, and the runs again, I just kind of keep them more chill. Um, and the next thing I like to do during the Lydia phase is like I said, I feel like my thoughts get more messy. I feel like I get more emotional. I'm harder on myself. Um, and yeah, thoughts just can get negative in your head. And so I kind of like to keep my mind busy and I, I'm not the biggest advocate for like constantly having media playing because I think it is good to be sitting alone with yourself and sitting alone with your thoughts. But if I'm being honest, not in the luteal phase, like that's my week where I'm like, we're just going to have a podcast playing all the time or music going. So I kind of am a little bit distracted because I work from home alone. I'm home alone a lot. And I think that's like the hardest part of it because when you're alone, it's easy to just like get in your head, you know, you have no one else to talk to but yourself. And so I kind of try to avoid that um, when I am getting into those moves and I'll just play a podcast play a, a show on the TV. Like sometimes I'll walk on my walking pad while I'm working and editing and I have a movie going just to like add more distraction to my mind. Um, and it helps, it helps me. So, um, in music too, worship music is really great. Um, and so yeah, I just kind of keep my head a little busy during this week because I am tend to be a little more sad or more hard on myself when it's really unnecessary. And it really is just due to my hormones. Um, and then Oh, I, so I mentioned this earlier. The next thing that I do is I like to express the fact that I'm in my luteal phase to the people that are like in my very close circle, like the people I talk to on a daily basis or see on a daily basis. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to let you know I'm in my luteal phase. I'm not, and this is important. Don't use it as an excuse to act out and be irrational and be moody and not be a good friend or girlfriend or whatever, but like, it's okay to like, let them know because I think they will have more compassion and more understanding and more maybe empathy to you and give you a little more grace in your poor moments. Cause uh, it's, it's something to struggle with, with my boyfriend. Cause he's very like, mine never matter. And I'm like, you're not a girl. And we go back and forth over it, but I still tell them and my brother understands, like he can tell when me, cause he's, I lived with him for a year. Like he's around me all the time and say with his girlfriend, we're like syncing each other up. I don't know if you knew this, but like girls can like slowly begin to sync up if you spend a lot of time with them and our cycles are getting closer and closer. Um, 
and he knows I'm like oh you're getting double whammy like we're both moody this week um but just letting them know I feel like it helps with relationships um a lot um and then the next thing I just I eat more food I definitely make sure that I'm properly fueled because one I'm just more hungry I'm like actually ravenous like every few hours like I had breakfast at like 11 and I just it's not even two and I have I ate lunch and like I usually don't eat that close in between and I did and I was starving probably going to be hungry by the end of this episode but I just like eat more because I think your body needs more calories I'm pretty sure I was in my notes don't quote me on it but it's either during your actual I think it is your follicular phase but during your um, menstrual cycle too you just burn more calories so you need more food um but yeah um and then I really focus on hydration. This is really important too, just to make sure you're hydrated, your body's functioning properly because I just feel like your body's working harder during the luteal phase. It feels like it is. So I try to nourish it the best that I can. Again, I do that through food. I do that through hydration. Um, and I try to limit the caffeine, but like I really don't. Honestly, I kind of increase it, which is probably not my bit. That's not really advice. That's just me being honest. Um, and then another thing I do is I do more like reading because it's it's just a chill, low key activity that one again, like kind of keeps my mind off of my thoughts and it's kind of a distraction, but it's peaceful and it brings me clarity. It's like a podcast, but you're literally just sitting and reading. So I really do like to read or um, I really press into my Bible studies too. I really like focus on those um, in the mornings and those tend to help as well. It just gives you more like peace and kind of calms you down a little bit, de-stresses you. Um, and then um, another thing that I, I really like to do is make my nights like super cozy. Like I romanticize the heck out of my nights. Like I'll make my tea. I sometimes I like warm up a blanket before I go to bed. I watch a little show. I, uh, I don't know. I just really like elongate my night routine. Um, and it just helps like wind me down and it feels like a little bit of self-care, a little bit of pampering just because I feel like we need it. Um, and that goes into the next thing is I just do more self-care in general. Um, like it's actually, it was unintentional, but I get a facial once a month and it has like fallen. The scheduling dates fall like during my luteal phase every single time. Um, and it's so funny because I always feel bad for my facialist because I'm like, when I'm in my luteal phase, I'm just not as social. Like I'm just more quiet. Like I don't really want to chat all the time. Like I do want to chat, but I'm just less than normal. Um, so I always feel bad because sometimes I feel like I'm like quiet and I'm like, I'm, I'm not like this. It's just, she sees me in the worst week every single month. Um, but the self-care is really nice. Like a facial, if you do that monthly, do it during your luteal phase or a massage or whatever it may be. Even do things at home, like a little face mask or take a bath. Oh, I love baths. Take a bath. Um, just do all of those little things to pamper yourself and make yourself feel a little better. Um, and then the last thing is I just get ready more because if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, I feel like I just feel like sometimes I feel a little ugly during the video phase. I don't know. I'm just harder on myself. I feel like girls, if you probably understand, but I just like don't feel ever like I look my best during the video phase. And so I do my most, like do my hair the most and do my makeup and I like wear cuter outfits just to like bring myself up and not that you need to wear makeup and do your hair to look beautiful but it just helps you know if you're a girl it just it just helps doing your makeup you feel fun and girly and cute um and so I do that because it does help me and yeah those are all of the tips and all the things that I do during my video phase um it's lovely we're here and we're loving it I do think it's just important to just understand like to know you're in your luteal phase, I feel like it just helps the symptoms because it's not like, oh, this is me, something's wrong with me, like, why am I so sad? It's like, oh, my hormones are actually, like, changing, and this is why, and there's a cause and effect, and I think it, it helps you make more sense of it, um, and there are things you can do, and it's just, it does, they all do really, really help, um, but a few more things, too, like, in my notes from when I was in a horm into hormone health that I took, um, the food that they recommend is just eating more nutrient-dense foods that provide more calories um, because, oh, it does say your energy dips during this period. That makes sense. Um, and fill up on complex carbs because this is going to help stabilize serotonin and dopamine in your body to prevent mood swings because we get mood swings. <laughs> um, and boost the intake of healthy natural sugars. So this would be like roasted or baked root vegetables, like beets. Um, I love beets. And then... Um, for your mind too, this is things that they recommend is do more like task and detail oriented projects um, and bring projects to completion. So if you can like time, um, when I was hearing about this, they were saying like time projects, if you're like 
within your career or your job or school or whatever, if you can time it up to be wrapping up like the final touches during your luteal phase, that's like actually the most productive way to utilize your luteal phase because you're more efficient in that area. Um, it says the first half of it, you should use more energy to spend with others. So more collaborative stuff, more event stuff. Um, but then the second half, focus more on taking care of yourself. Um, and they recommended to just like saying no more and setting more boundaries. Otherwise you'll become irritated this week. So again, like I feel this, like I definitely feel this because like, I just feel less social during this week in my cycle. Um, I, I do just like allow myself to stay home more and just give myself more grace. Um, because I know I'm just, it's just like what my body needs, I guess. Um, but anyway, I hope this sheds some light for you guys on the beauty of the luteal phase. Again, there are ways to utilize it to your benefit. Um, and it's temporary. It's just a week. It's just seven to 10 days. We're going to get through it. I'm on day five. So I'm like coming up on halfway, hopefully halfway. Um, but anyway, next week when we're chatting, we'll be all good. We'll be good to go. Um, and yeah, I just want to thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you guys would leave a review, that would mean the world. It really helps to support my podcast. Um, and anyway, I love you guys so much. We'll chat in the next episode. Bye guys.